Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it has been a while, I've been MIA. However, I'll explain all that in the coming videos. We are going to be tackling a very common problem that is affecting a lot of people. And that is why you frequently wake up at night to go and pee or to urinate, medically known as nocturia. Now, don't get me wrong. All of us have at least have that one trip at night where we go and pee. That is not a big deal or it may not sound like an, an alarm. However, I'm talking about people who wake up every day, every single night, and frequent the bathroom to go and pee. So this could be interrupting with your sleep, with your energy, with your mood, and in older people, this could bring about falls. So this could be a sign of something deeper that is going on. So in this video, we are going to look at what is nocturia, why it happens, the causes, and what you can actually do about it. Stick with me. This is information for everyone. So let us start with the basics. Let us understand what nocturia is. Nocturia is when someone wakes up at night one or more times, specifically to urinate or to pee. This is not just a sleep issue. It could be a symptom of an underlying medical issue. So if you're having this or you're experiencing this, please make sure that you go and see your healthcare provider as soon as possible. Now that we have understood what nocturia is, let us look at some of the common causes of nocturia. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting and surprising. My first point, I think everyone will agree with it, is drinking plenty of water in the evening, especially when you're approaching your bedtime. And um, this increases the urine production overnight. I'm talking about water. This can cut across for the children and the adults. You have seen parents trying to restrict um, children taking in a lot of fluids. It could be water, it could be fluids in the evening. So this can go two ways. A child waking up at night to pee or a child not being able to wake up and unfortunately peeing on their bed. So those are the two scenarios that could actually happen when it comes to children. When it comes to the adults, with the adults, you're going to wake up more frequently. That means it's going to disrupt your sleep your energy, your mood for the following day. You may wake up, but you may feel like this is not this is not me. You may feel like a little bit moody, a little bit tired because you did not have proper rest. You didn't have proper sleep. That is what could happen if you're taking in lots of fluid, especially at night. So apart from the water, we can talk about the caffeine and the alcohol. These are both diuretics. What I mean by that is they make the kidneys release more water. So have you noticed people who take in a lot of caffeine, people who take a lot of alcohol tend to urinate more? Well, now you know the reason why. This is because your kidneys are going to be releasing more water. Hence, you're going to be peeing more. And if you've been drinking a lot at night, you're going to be going to the toilet more to pee than a person who hasn't. And that is my first point. My second point is aging. As we age, the body tends to produce less hormone called the vessel pressin, which helps to retain or to hold the fluid during sleep. And remember that we make more urine at night. And also remember that as we get older, our blood does tend to hold less. So that means you're going to make more frequent trips at night to go and pee or to urinate because first of all, the vessel pressin has reduced has reduced in the amount which helps you to retain this water and also your bladder can no longer hold as much urine as it's used to in your youth so therefore as we age we expect to make more trips to pee or to urinate than when we were in our youth we go to our third point and that is the weak bladder muscles now the weak bladder muscles can normally cause an overactive bladder so the weak bladder muscles what they do they cause sudden urges to urinate even during sleep especially in women who have weak pelvic muscles this tends to reduce the bladder control making these women more prone to nocturia that means that they're going to wake up more at night to urinate than women that have strong pelvic muscles my fourth point are medical conditions remember i already said that nocturia is not only a sleep issue but also a health issue and the first medical condition i can talk about here is diabetes now when you have high blood sugar that is uncontrollable the kidneys are going to flush out the excess sugars through urine so if you have a patient and they were diagnosed with diabetes, the first thing is you have to know which type of diabetes do they have. When you look at their urine, does it have a sweet or fruity smell or is it completely odorless? So you have to know which kind that they have. Then you also have to know that nocturia in diabetes also worsens when a person takes in a lot of fluids because they are trying to quench the excessive thirst that they're experiencing. 
people with diabetes tend to have excessive thirst so they tend to take in a lot of water and that is the reason why the nocturia is worsened because when you take in a lot of water already explained in the first point you are at a high chance of you urinating all the time and most frequently at night if you're taking this water even in the evening sessions so you have to know that another point is urinary tract infections or the utis now here you have patients always coming to you and saying meaning i'm urinating a lot and here is the reason why your bladders are being irritated causing the urgency even at night so you're not only going to have the issues of urinating during the day but also at night you may also have the problem so you're going to keep on urinating if you have the utis then we also go to another medical condition in men known as the bph or the benign prosthetic hyperplasia now i was fortunate enough to work with a urologist dr kagwa samuel and i got to see this medical condition i got to see prostate cancer i got to see so many issues when it came to the urinary tract so i am well conversant with this medical condition and it normally happens when the enlarged prostate presses onto the urethra making it difficult for you to completely empty your bladder last but not least let us talk about the heart failure so when you have heart failure or if you have seen people with heart failure normally the fluids build up in the body especially during the day but they do it in the legs so you will notice that their lower limbs are always swollen so when you lie down at night the body reabsorbs this fluid and then the kidneys get to work hence frequent urination at night i hope we have understood ourselves there then my next point we can talk about sleep disorders so people with sleep apnea normally have disrupted sleep episodes which increases urine production especially at night and then lastly we can talk about the medication mostly their side effects when we are talking about the medication and their side effects we all know that several drugs either cause or worsen nocturia and you've had a lot of patients for example those ones with high blood pressure complaining that they urinate a lot this is because they are given diuretics now diuretics are also known as water pills that help to increase urine production and helping the body eliminate excessive fluid and salt and this is normally given to patients with high blood pressure or heart failure then also certain antihypertensives for example the alpha blockers people who have um, for example bipolar and maybe you're given a mood um, a mood stabilizer you may also experience nocturia then also people on calcium channel blockers you're going to experience nocturia so my piece of advice to these individuals who are having these issues because of the drugs if you have recently started a drug and you're experiencing several trips to the bathroom to go and pee or to urinate and it is also disrupting your sleep i would advise you to go back to your healthcare provider try explaining this to him or her you may not need to stop the drug entirely but probably there may be some adjustments i wouldn't advise you to stop the drug entirely but i would advise you maybe to make an adjustment when it comes to timing when it comes to adjusting in timing i would use my grandmother as an example because she is the best example for this um she was diagnosed with high blood pressure and she hated lasik she hated prison maybe all her might she refused to take it reason is she said she used to urinate a lot she wouldn't get enough sleep she couldn't do any other thing that she wanted to do because she had to go to the to the bathroom or to the toilet all the time to pee so she did not like it and she stopped taking it however when her legs started swelling i had to step in and tell her you know what let us change the timing probably take it in the mornings so so that during that day it's like part of you you're going to the, the bathroom it's not disturbing you a lot and um it worked it worked so i wouldn't advise you to entirely stop that drug go speak to your healthcare provider maybe the other alternatives that they can give you or you can look at changing in the timing the time that you take that drug so that it does not interfere with your daily life activities so when should you go to the hospital concerning nocturia number one if you're waking up more than once at night to pee or to urinate this could be a sign that something is wrong if you're waking up once i'm like okay you're waking up twice i'll say mm. but if you're waking up every single night and it's becoming a pattern every night you're waking up to pee and not just once multiple times please go and see your healthcare provider immediately if this is impacting your sleep your mood or your day life activities or function please go to the hospital and have this checked out you're supposed to have proper sleep proper rest so that you can have a productive day the following day and if also you're experiencing any pain burning or blood or excessive 
fast. This could mean something else. Please go to the hospital immediately. Remember that nocturia may not be the problem, but it could be a red flag that something else is going on in your body. So make sure that you go and get that full body checkup immediately you experience these things in your body. Okay, now let us look at some of the solutions or things that you can do if you're actually faced with this kind of problem. Number one is adjust your fluid intake. Avoid taking a lot of fluids two or four hours to your bedtime. If you feel thirsty, just sip but do not gallop large amounts of water. Then number two is watch what you take in. Watch what you drink when it comes to caffeine and the alcohol. Avoid taking these things in the late afternoons or the evenings because if you do that, they are going to cause your body to release large amounts of water through the urine. Next point is elevate your limbs before bed. Now, if you're having issues or you have problems with swollen ankles or feet, your body retains a lot of fluids during the day. So what you have to do here is try and elevate your limbs 30 to 60 minutes before bed. So this will help to shift the fluid back into circulation earlier. Then the next one is empty your bladder before bed. This is very obvious but often overlooked. Now try double voiding. What I mean by double voiding is emptying your bladder twice. The first time before bed you go and urinate. Then wait a few minutes then go back and again try and pee again it could be a small amount of urine coming out but this is going to help you to completely empty your bladder because the first time of course the bladder you're feeling the urine and you're like oh let me go and urinate before i go to bed you go and urinate of course it will be a quiet amount of urine but after that you wait for a few minutes let me say 30 minutes or 15 minutes before completely going to bed and <clears throat> before completely going to bed and blackout go back the second time and then try and empty the, the bladder again this could actually help a lot because this is going to help you to completely empty your bladder before bed hence reducing the amount of time that you're going to wake up at night to pee the fifth point is review your medication so you could ask your doctor your midwife your pharmacist your nurse if the prescription that was given to you is the one that is contributing to the nighttime urination for example i already talked about the diuretics in the case of my grandmother try adjusting the time if you see that you're having issues with the drug try taking it in the morning hours and in the afternoon or the evening time so that you can do away with the nighttime urination so try and think about that if the medicine is the one bringing about the nighttime urination we can try the pelvic floor exercises especially women we talked about the weak pelvic muscles contributing to this you can try the cogil exercises these ones help you to strengthen the pelvic floor muscles that support your bladder and the urethra women can try this for a few minutes because it's going to help you with your agency and also to give you a grip of your bladder control so try the pelvic floor exercises lastly treat the underlying medical conditions for example if a person has diabetes heart disease prostate enlargement sleep apnea work with your healthcare provider and find a long-term solution remember that nocturia often improves if the main medical issue is being properly controlled or managed and if you learned something new today do not forget to give this video a thumbs up share it with anyone who may find it useful and don't forget to hit the subscribe button let me know in the comment section do you pee at night what works for you i would love to hear your stories until next time let us meet in our next discussion have a good one